today. Um, and just wish everybody in the chamber, all your family, a very blessed and sacred uh, Christmas season. Thank you. Thank you. If I could make some observations myself and commence by associating myself with all the comments of the four party leaders. Um, I've got a lot of thank yous to acknowledge this year. Um, and I'm going to start with the people I think make are the real custodians of, uh, of the Senate in many ways, and that is the team of staff led by the clerk, Richard Pye, the deputy clerk, the assistant clerks, all the staff in the Department of the Senate, um, in particular the committee staff. Um, we know that in a year like this, a parliament sitting matters. Um, the staff have had to do extraordinary things to enable us to go about our work, undertake extraordinary workloads. And this parliament has successfully sat the committee that Senator Wong mentioned, chaired by Senator Gallagher with Senator Patterson and all parties represented on it. Um, it has undertaken a very serious amount of work and this parliament has functioned. I might say, unlike some of our states, where they have not been able to continue in the same way, and that is a shared commitment across all sides, despite the occasional difference, but a shared commitment across all sides that I have experienced this year in both houses. Um, we farewelled John Brown during the year. It does feel odd for the first time in my 14 years to not be farewelling John and his, uh, thanking John and his team of attendants, but to Steve and the team of attendants, thank you uh, for all the work that you do. In a, in a year like this, more than most, we remember that we are reminded that we often take a lot for granted. Um, the basic things we do, but in this building in particular, I'd like to have a particular thanks for the Department of Parliamentary Services, who sometimes don't always get the plaudits they deserve. And that is from the cleaning staff, who we previously um, did not depend on to the same degree for our safety. Um, the IT staff, who we had to ensure this parliament could keep functioning in a matter of weeks without people travelling, and broadcasting, who have enabled a rapid transition to virtual participation so that our work could keep going, to name just a few. We have asked a lot from them this year and they have delivered. I want to make a, have a few personal thanks for people the Speaker and I have worked with on your behalf in the health departments. To Professor Michael Kidd and Dr Catherine Kelleher from the Commonwealth Department of Health, we have had fortnightly conferences with them that have involved everything from wearing masks to the seats we put you in to when we can sit, um, to when Aussies can open or you can use the gym. And they have been available and answered the most detailed questions for this unique workplace that, like nowhere else in the country, was bringing people from all around our nation when others were not able to travel. Um, the ACT Department of Health were exceptionally helpful. Um, occasional disagreements might have happened, but the officials in the Department of Health there facilitated the travel of people uh, across state and territory borders where travel restrictions were put in place. And I'd like to thank Vanessa Del Mollen in particular, who I worked with, um, and I can imagine the Victorian Senate has worked very closely with um, over the last six to eight months. Um, to the leaders and whips, to the very kind words said by um, Senators um, Birmingham, Wong, Waters and Mackenzie, thank you on a personal level. Um, but to the whips also, we have had to have challenging, difficult, under pressure discussions at various points this year um, and our shared commitment to this Senate working and your uh, belief that um, us and the officials are working on, on your behalf and the Senate's behalf have made that possible. Um, to the Deputy President, Sue Lyons, thank you very much for your support and all the work that you have done, um, particularly in very long committee stages, very late when I can't even come in and relieve you. Um, to the Speaker, the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition in the other place. You know, this has been a year where um, we've had to do a lot more in some ways together in the operation of the parliament because we could not take for granted that we could be here. And I'd like to thank them. I know that, that, that work has been done across parties to ensure that we could come together. To all senators, um, you have been very understanding. Um, Arrangements have constantly changed. You have had to travel at short notice. You've had to stop, not travel at short notice. Some of you have been turned around while travelling. Um, your understanding of these arrangements uh, and your personal support for me and the work I do, I just want to say a very big thank you uh, for your flexibility and understanding. To all our staff, um, it has been a challenging year. To my staff in particular, who I hadn't seen for several months up until the borders opened, being here in Canberra, my deepest appreciation for you being able to work and in very challenging circumstances, given they were based in Melbourne. 
I want to particularly thank my Victorian colleagues. I'm not just being parochial. Most of you have had a tougher year than a lot of others because of the situation in Melbourne. Um, that your staff have had to work from home. Um, you haven't been able to travel. You have been had limitations placed on you at home. And I know that has been made your job more challenging. So I want to thank you in particular. Our families, all of our families, who here in the toughest of all years have felt our absence probably more than any other year. Um, they have shown an enormous um, understanding of what we do. Um, they've appreciated that we view our roles are important. And I know I speak on behalf of all senators when I say that thank you for understanding our absence in this year in particular. Although one did say to me that he wasn't sure whether his family wanted him as present as he had been this year either. One thing that this year has done to me is to make me think. We may never know what burdens, sadnesses or challenges other people have. Um, and in a year like this in particular, we don't necessarily know which of our colleagues have had family losses, illnesses, um, job losses, and all the challenges that all Australians have experienced this year. This year has been a time to remember that and to remember heading into a season that may not be as joyous for all of us in this building, let alone across the community. Um, empathy is something we can take away from this year, I hope. Now, just on a personal level, um, I want to thank my own family, um, Helen, Nick and Ben, and Helen's parents, John and Fran, who have carried a burden for us when we've come here on very short notice, uh, and who even let us use their home to quarantine in, um, so that we could stay together. I want to say, um, particular thanks to my own mother, who has borne a very difficult year with stoicism I don't think I could muster. But I just want to finish with this. Merry Christmas to everyone. Normally the focus is on the Merry Christmas bit, but let, let us just go away saying, let us all not just have a Merry Christmas, but a very happy new year and hope for a very different 2021. Thank you. I think we've got some. Yeah. We can do this quickly, I promise. I've received a message from the House of Representatives forwarding the Crimes Legislation Amendment Economic Disruption Bill 2020 for concurrence. Minister. Dislocated leg. Um, I move that this bill now may proceed without formalities and now be read a first time. Question is that motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Ayes have it. The clerk. In the Crimes Act 1940, in the Criminal Code Act 1995, in the Proceeds of Crime Act 2002, and for other purposes. Senator Rustin. I move that this bill now be read a second time, and I seek leave to have the second reading speech incorporated into Hansard. Is leave granted? Leave is granted. In accordance with the bill, uh, in accordance with Standing Order 111, further consideration of this bill is now adjourned to the 2nd of February next year. I have received messages from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that the House has agreed to the amendments made by the Senate to the following bills. Financial Sector Reform, Hain Royal Commission Response Bill 2020, Social Security Administration Amendment, Continuation of Cashless Welfare Bill 2020. I have received messages from the House of Representatives informing the Senate the House has also agreed to the following bills without amendment. The Electoral Amendment Territory Representation Bill 2020, Sport Integrity Australia Amendment World Anti-Doping Code Review Bill 2020, Transport Security Amendment Testing and Training Bill 2020, Wine Australia Amendment La Label Directory Bill 2019. I have received a letter requesting changes in the membership of committees. Senator Rustin. I seek leave to move a motion to appoint senators to committees. Leave is granted. Senator Rustin. I move that Senator Small be appointed a participating member of all legislation and references committee and senators be discharged and appointed to committees in accordance with the list circulated in the chamber. Question is that motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. The contrary, no. The ayes have it. Senator Rustin. I move that the Senate at its rising adjourn until Tuesday, the 2nd of February 2021 at midday or such other time as may be fixed by the President or in the event of the President being unavailable by the Deputy year. President and that the time of meeting so determined shall be notified to each Senator and leave of absence be granted to every member of the Senate from the end of the sitting today to the day on which the Senate next meets. The question is yeah. that motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. 
contrary, no. The eyes have it by acclamation. Pursuant to the order agreed earlier today, if there's nothing else, Clark. Pursuant to the order agreed earlier today, the Senate stands adjourned, and we'll meet again on Tuesday, the 2nd of February next year, at 12 noon. Merry Christmas to all.